the debt doesn't look good. Obviously, it's, it's 108 percent, which is a lot. But the reason for that is that they are planning to build a, a new mine. And he's been buying millions and millions of dollars of his own stock, which is always great to see when you know the CEO is skin in the game and adds more skin to the game. So if Pep can can establish establish themselves there, that that business is gonna pop pop off. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 looking looking at this one with with curious eyes. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Fin Me Up weekly wrap, where we cover the most important stock market announcements that happened during the week, all summarized with some extra insights. Every day, weekday, we also post the daily highlights on the Fin Me Up app, where you can just see all news summarized, whether it is director's dealings, company announcements, or financial results, or more. Uh, so that is posted every day, so what we've taken you a lot of time, now only takes you a few seconds to be updated. So today we'll be looking at Pan African Resources, Pepcor, Vodacom, Shoprite, Renegen, Glencore, and in the US we'll be looking at AMD, SoFi, Meta, Microsoft, and ChatGPT. So let's get into it. Pan African Resources they posted an operational update. Gold production fell close to 15%. Agreements have been made to restructure Barberton Mines underground operations. Full year production guidance remains maintained and the senior debt grew by 108%, so they are definitely not afraid for some extra debt. Saab Buerta, one of the FinMap mentors, Pan African Resources, is one of his top five picks for the year. We interviewed him. That video is live on the YouTube channel. The link is in the description, but for his full fo top five picks, you can visit the FinMap app. Any thoughts? Yeah, there you go, Pan. Uh, interesting results. So, so of course, the, the, the big reason for the drop in share price is that the gold production had fell from 108k to 92k ounces. That's quite a quite a big drop. And for a gold mine, they have a lot of fixed costs. So, if your production goes down by this much, it means the cost per unit produced um, is a lot higher, which obviously has a has a uh, quite a negative impact on the bottom line. But furthermore, everything is 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 fine. Um, this is one of the best gold mines in 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 the country, and and rightfully so. Um, you can re read all about it or listen to the video from Charles Buerta. He, he covers it quite extensively. Um, the debt doesn't look good. Obviously, it's it's 108 percent, which is a lot. But the reason for that is that they are planning to build a, a new mine, so another mine, and of course they need funding for that. Interesting point on on Pan African is they're actually the first mine in South Africa um, to build and use an industrial size um, solar plant. So they they save a few million rands a, a month a month from that by using the energy from the solar plant. So very impressive. I back these guys. It's also one of my um, top five picks. So so let's see what happens. The next one is Pepcor, and I know you're also a fan of Pepcor. So they posted a three-month update or trading update. The retail segment revenue grew by 8.2%. FinTech segment revenue fell by 10%. Group revenue, which is the, the main revenue to look at, is uh, increasing by 6.5%. And Pep, so you know, Pepcor is the holding company. Pep is one of the companies. So Pep recorded sales growth of 6.2%. While Ackerman's sale fell by uh, two point nine percent, what do you think of that? Yeah, so we had uh, quite a few retailers that released results uh, in the last couple of months, and they have been struggling due to you know load shedding, uh, the aftermath of, of COVID and all of this. Pip, like you know, it's an amazing business. We said last time one of the best distributors in the game, and the results are pretty good: eight point two percent retail um, group revenue, six point five percent, not bad. Um, they did buy the Brazilian business recently, which is doing quite well. So that's very, very bullish. I mean, Brasilia has a has a massive economy, much bigger than ours, but it's the same kind of demographic, um, low to medium income households. So if Pep can can establish establish themselves there, that that business is going to pop pop off. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 looking looking at this one with with curious eyes. Yeah, I mean, Brazil is definitely a big opportunity. It's it's now all about execution and, and whether they can execute in Brazil like they did in South Africa. Uh, so, hoping for them that they do. Vodacom Group, group revenue grew by 14.8%. That's, you know, for a large company, that's proper. Uh, with the acquisition of Vodafone Egypt, impacted the results positively. Group service revenue grew by 16.1%. The South African service revenue grew by 3%. 
financial services revenue increased by 30.6%. So there's a lot of growth in the financial services segment, but it's still small compared to the rest of their segments. And Vodapay, which is their super app, has reached 4.5 million downloads. Uh, that's also quite a lot of people. Any thoughts? Yeah, so so the acquisition of Vodafone Phone Egypt has been the, the, the biggest acquisition in their history. So that's massive for, for Vodacom. And obviously, that's going to impact all the results. Um, and then the, the interesting one to me here, Ego, is the is the financial services revenue, thirty percent. That that's a lot, and I think the main reason is probably probably remittances in Africa. You know, people sending cash and data from one country to another, family ma family member. So that's that's something to to definitely keep, keep an eye on. And then the super apps. I think you know, everyone is building super apps these days. Vodacom, MTN, and a lot of these, you know, data or banks. Um, so that's that. I mean, that's going to be very interesting to see where we are in five years with this. Is there a app that can kind of take over the market? Um, and I think you know that's that's where we're going. So, but but overall positive results for Vodacom, and we'll see how they compare to to MTN. To a large extent, you know, data is the currency of Africa and, and the world, you know, it's it's where we spend our time and, you know, we spend time on our phones and that requires data. And regarding the super app, I mean, there's definitely a market for that. If you look in at WeChat in China, the way they executed that, if, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity in that, you know, in the US, in Europe, in, in Africa. Uh, so definitely excited to see how that plays out. ShopRite, another retailer, another retailer that we love. It's where I shop. Uh, you know, I have my Checkers X uh, card. I use 66. So they result, their results uh, is mixed to some extent. Uh, you know, there's positives and there's some headwinds. Uh, load shedding being one of them. So I saw a stat or it, it was in their results where you know, it was almost close to half a billion rand. Uh, their extra expenses with load shedding. Uh, you know, having to pay for the alternatives, it's it's just huge. And that obviously impacts their overall results. So, you know, looking at their total sale of merchandise, that increased by 16.8% for the six months. The supermarkets in South Africa segment uh, reported sales growth of 17.5%. The non-South African supermarket segment reported sales growth of 17.5%. Uh, the furniture segment reported sales growth of 8. 6%, you know, so there's growth, but also there is inflation. So, you know, your revenue will increase with inflation because people pay more, but, you know, they still need the same amount of goods and certain goods. So, you know, the revenue growth is one thing, but to see how the actual profit is growing is, is another thing, um, you know, and they have all these additional costs. So, you know, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, 100%. You're 100% right. There you go. So, uh, something that people often forget when it comes to retailers is, the, the thing of inflation. So are they actually outperforming inflation? And at the moment we are in a high inflationary environment. And then of course, was it generic growth or was it growth due to acquisitions? Um, yeah, that's two, two things to definitely um, keep in mind. But when it comes to ShopRite, you know, we uh, uh, it feels like all of our mentors on the app are fans of, of ShopRite and rightfully so. They're one of the best operators in the game once again. I read something, I think it's currently the 46th month in a row where they actually gain market share. That's almost four years straight, month on month, that they are kind of beating the competition, which is is actually insane. So these guys know what they're doing. They're gaining market share and the results are also looking good. Despite inflation, I mean, 17% here, 17% there, another 17.5% for non-SA um, supermarkets. That's that's incredible results. So well done, ShopRite. Happy shareholder. They are incredible executors. And if I had to choose one retailer for the long term in South Africa, it would be ShopRite. I mean, they've got all these additional uh, mass mart stores also coming online with that acquisition. Uh, you know, they've, they are a fintech player as well. You know, they, there's a rumor that they'll open their own bank and it's been sort of announced it's, it's not going to be a general bank like Capitec or Standard Bank. Or, well, who knows? But one thing is for sure, they know how to innovate, they know how to execute and they know how to be efficient. Uh, so definitely one to watch for the long term. Now for an, a, a more exciting company, Renogen. So Renogen is preparing for a potential IPO in the U.S., they post a lot of announcements uh, as they need to do as, you know, they are past exploration, but they are still in the early days and they've got big plans. 
uh, and they need to raise a lot of capital, especially for phase two. So they are preparing for a potential IPO in the US and obviously need shareholders approval for that. Uh, you know, but what do you think of that, Paul? It's it's something something exciting, uh, but you know, let's see how it plays out. Yeah, Renogen once again you go on the weekly news. Uh, it's a company we we've been following very closely. So a lot of people will be asking why US. So it's simple. The US is a way way bigger capital markets than than we do, and they also have a appetite for startup, you know, risky businesses. That's why you see some of the tech companies in in the United States trading at insane multiples. It's because they kind of they buy into the hype a lot more than, than we do. Um, and yeah, so, so Renogen at the moment is very small and they now need about 15 billion or something to, 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 to complete phase two, which is four or five times bigger than their market cap. So that's a lot of money. And, and it's crucial for, for, for them to actually raise that money in order to continue. So now it's crucial for shareholders that Renogen does not sell a lot of shares to actually get that, that that funding because that's gonna that's gonna cause dilution and you know don't want to see that especially not in a small company so so one will they get the money uh, two how much equity do they need to sell and and three hopefully all the funding or most of the funding will come from debt which is dangerous but it's better than um, selling equity and then if they sell equity at what valuation so it's crucial for them that they sell the shares at a high price because if the shares get sold at a low price, that's going to dil dil dilute the shareholders um, stay completely. So that's that 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 is a potential risk. So they need to keep the story going. That's what I'm I'm trying to say. So they they will say stuff like we find the highest, see them in the in the ground. Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk they need the <laughs> they need the helium for the rockets and st and stuff like this. Um, they need to be in the news to keep the story going um, because they need funding, they need to raise debt, they need to raise equity. Um, and, and so for the listeners, just a word of caution. This is almost like cryptocurrency, massive, massive potential. If we make it, we're going to make it big, but it will be a bumpy ride. And there is, is risk. So don't bet the house on Renogen, but definitely bet or don't be afraid to maybe dip your toes. That's what I'm saying. Use your discretion. Yeah, it's it's definitely not uh, something from our grandmother's pension fund, uh, but it, it is something that that I own. Uh, that their team is, you know, they know how to operate. Uh, the potential is there. It is a an, an asset that is required globally for various reasons. Uh, so it's all about execution, and part of the execution is fundraising. So this will be an exciting uh, news to watch. Glencore, last South African company, they just posted a, a full year production report. Copper production fell by 12%, cobalt production grew by 40%, zinc production fell by 16%, nickel production grew by 5%, and their ferrochrome production remains unchanged. Uh, you know, copper is seeing a great rally. There's a lot of hype around copper, you know, people thinking that copper is going to be the, the resource to be in for this year. Uh, so Glencore is a play on copper as well, even though their production fell a little bit, the copper price is up. So they are posting the results sometime in Feb. So we'll have a close look at that. I mean, they are doing stock buybacks. Uh, they are paying some nice dividends. Uh, they are planning to on, on uh, returning capital to shareholders. So let's see how they, they do. In the US, AMD, I own the stock uh, EPS of earnings per share of 69 US cents. Q4 revenue of 5.6 billion, beating expectations. Full year revenue of 23.6 billion, up 44% year over year. AMD Q4 revenue by the different segments. So they've got four, and that is data center revenue of $1.7 billion, client revenue of $903 million, gaming revenue $1.6 billion, and embedded revenue $1.4 billion. The data center revenue is still, you know, growing at a great pace. Data is just becoming bigger and bigger, and it will always continue getting bigger and bigger because, you know, data needs to be stored somewhere, and, you know, that storage needs chips, and AMD provides those chips. Uh, the embedded revenue also really catching up to the overall, overall revenue, growing a lot as well. Uh, so, you know, I own this stock. I continue to hold. It is cyclical. You know, at the moment, there is high inventories of various goods globally. Uh, there's a lower global demand, there's the fear of recession, but you know, in time that will change, you know, it is cyclical, and I back the management of AMD, uh, you know, AMD has great margins, it's in an industry that is ever-growing, uh, you know, they've, they have a history of execution, and they are really innovative, 
Uh, so no, you know, for a semiconductor play, I, I really like AMD. Uh, it's it's I'm not saying that you should also buy AMD. That's just my take. But you know, the results mi mixed a bit. Uh, you know, like the client revenue down a bit. But overall, I'm I'm still happy uh, just holding AMD. Yeah, quite a quite a few narratives at play here. You go the the first one is the semiconductor space. How is that going to pan out? Then you have the AMD versus Nvidia narrative, which is very interesting to to actually follow. And then of course the the macro cycle. Where are we at the moment? Because this being a smaller, or not, I won't say small, but this being a tech company in America in a potential recession is something to, to, to definitely bear in mind. Um, this is not the kind of stock you want to hold right before everything you know, goes into the ground. So, um, but for the long term, definitely a company that's very interesting and, and maybe also just, just throw a few cents at it. That's what I'm doing. Um, not a lot, but you know, that, that, that forces you to kind of keep up, keep up with the company and um, you know, especially for semiconductors, which is a super, super interesting space with a lot of potential. That's definitely, um, you know, a few cards to hold there. So far, another company I own, uh, you know, still a, a bet on the bigger picture and the big vision. Uh, earnings per share of negative five cents. Uh, and, you know, that beats expectations of negative nine cents. So they are beating expectations there. They are continue beating expectations. I mean, I can't remember when last they did not beat expectations. Revenue of $443 million, also beating expectations. And the revenue increased by 60% year over year. EBITDA of seventy million dollars, up fifteen point three x year over year, yes. times fifteen point three. That is incredible. Uh, GAAP net loss in, uh, in improved by sixty four percent year over year. New members, new members are four hundred eighty thousand, six hundred ninety five thousand product additions, and they are expecting to represent and show a profitable net income uh, by Q four in this new financial year. So. You know, they, they are gaining momentum, they are gaining users, they are getting closer to profitability, and that is what the market wants, profitability. Uh, Anthony Noto, the CEO, is really bullish on his own company. He's been buying millions and millions of dollars of his own stock, which is always great to see when, you know, the CEO has skin in the game and adds more skin to the game. What do you think of so far as results, Paul? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely a bullish. You go, know, they've been taking a beating, but I see the last couple of months, the share price has really recovered uh, to, to, to quite an extent. Not where we, we, we initially bought in, but very close to that. So that's 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 very good, especially given you know the the where we are in the, in the macro uh, state of of the economy, and then uh, for just for the for the listeners or for for the viewers, you'll see there that EBITDA is positive, seventy million, but the earnings per share is negative, and basically what that means is EBITDA is earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. The biggest element of that being the interest. So for every uh, small startup company, they typically have quite a bit of debt because that's how they kind of you know built the company and got listed and all of this and had to had to expand. So the debt element is quite a lot. That means the interest um, element is also it plays a, plays a big role there. That's why you'll see positive EBITDA but negative earnings per share. So the profit then after interest and tax and depreciation is negative. So so far being a, a startup, a tech startup. Getting close to profitability is massive. I mean, they'll probably be, um, you know, at break even next year or 2023, and then from there on, it's it's, you know, it's all um, all, all uphill from there or downhill, so to, so to speak. <laughs> and lastly, Meta earnings. Meta posted their earnings earnings per share of one dollar and seventy six cents, missing expectations. Revenue of thirty two billion dollars, beating expectations. Meta has announced a forty billion dollar share buyback program. Meta has uh, recorded daily active users of 2 billion beating expectations. A total of 3.74 billion people use Meta platforms uh, on a monthly basis. Facebook Reality Labs segment, which is the VR Metaverse uh, side, uh, posted revenues of $727 million and a net loss of $4.8 $4 billion. So that is <laughs> quite a big loss. Uh, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said that he wants Meta to become a leader in generative AI and addition to its existing work in recommendations AI. So, you know, the share price ran by like 24% after these results, incredible results, um, or incredible share price reaction to the results. Uh, you know, the results is still mixed. The EPS is lower than expectations. 
the revenue per ad is lower, the amount of times people see ads is higher. Uh, but you know, they have most of the world population using their services. Uh, I use WhatsApp every day, I use Instagram often, uh, there is Facebook. And you know, I, th I still think uh, WhatsApp as a large piece that is still to be monetized. I mean, they've got such a big uh, advantage. You know, it's, it, I don't know if I'll ever switch. Never say never, but in a really great product, they are great at executing. Uh, you know, Instagram and WhatsApp is what makes me really excited. The share price is up. Fortunately, I bought a bit uh, a, a few months ago, but I am trimming at these levels just to, to see if there's other opportunity elsewhere. The market has been running quite hard, uh, so we'll have to see. But, you know, the, the, the share buyback definitely got people excited. And, you know, the daily active users, monthly active users, definitely taking some share back from TikTok. Uh, so let's see how that goes. Microsoft is set to include, include ChatGPT on Bing in the coming weeks. So if you don't know, Microsoft has an investment in ChatGPT. And ChatGPT reportedly reached 100 million users in January. I think that's the fastest, fastest the company has ever reached 100 million users in one month uh, ever. Uh, so, you know, really exciting to watch this AI space. Maybe we should do a, a video on AI and which companies will benefit from AI. Let us know if you want us to do that in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check all the Fin Me Up links in the description. Maybe there's something for you, whether it's the app, whether it's, you know, the financial advisors. There's, there's quite a few things there. Check in the links in the description and all the, well, everything that it entails. Hope you have a great weekend. Cheers.